Hi, I'm Jamie from Chegg Tutors. Today I want to talk to you about cardinality, the idea of the size of a set in mathematics. Now, the size of a set is pretty simple if it's a finite set. It's just the number of elements, or n. If it's an infinite set, though, we actually have that there are different sizes of infinity. And this is related to how we can map um, injectively a, the set into another set, like the integers, the natural numbers, or the real numbers, etc. So there's something um, called a power set. So let's start with finite sets. There's something called a power set, which is simply the set of all subsets of a set S. So say S has n elements here. The cardinality of the set of all subsets, which we also call the power set, is 2 to the n. And let me show you how that works. So say, you know, even if it's apples and bananas or whatever, let's just say that the elements of the set of size n are 1, 2, 3, all the way to n. If these are something else, we can simply rename the elements of the set so that there's a first element, a second element, etc. Now, we can denote a sub. We can figure out what a subset is simply by saying, "Is one in the subset? If not, we put a zero. Is two in the subset? If it is, we put a one, etc. So for each number, one to n, we either put a zero if it's not in the subset, or a one if it is in the subset. Now we can denote any subset this way because any subset either has the number or doesn't, and that's true for all the numbers 1 to n. Since there are two choices for, um, this is there are two choices, 0 or 1, for the way we denote each element of the set, and there are n elements, or n elements in this string of 1s and zeros, we have that the size of this set is simply 2 to the n. You can go over that if it's a little confusing. Um, feel free to back up and do that again. The more interesting question is when the set is infinite. Now we know that we can always form bigger infinities because the size of the power set, the set of all subsets, is always greater than that of the set. So the size of the power set of the integers is greater than the size of the integers themselves. And that can go the power set of the power set of the integers is even greater. So we have an infinite number of sizes of infinity, which is kind of a crazy idea um, when you start, but you get used to it as you do more and more set theory. Now the proof for the idea that the power set of a set of numbers, or a set, the power set of a set has always has bigger cardinality than the set, that's a pretty complicated proof requiring a lot of abstraction. So let me just give you one famous example, which is called Cantor's Diagonal Arguments. So this is a proof that the size of the real numbers, or the size of the power set of the integers, or the natural numbers, is a greater than the size, the greater size of infinity than the size of the countable size of infinity of the natural numbers. So if we do have, this is a proof by contradiction, if we do have that the set of all real numbers is equal in size to the set of the countable numbers, then we can make a list. 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to infinity. And on that list must be every single real number that we, every single real number that is possible. So, let's take any random real numbers, I'll just put random real numbers for the first four here, and I'm going to show you a number that's not on this list. This can be extended to an infinite number of, um, to, to a list that, that has an infinite size, as long as it's listed by the natural numbers. So here's a number that's not on this list. I take the first place value after the decimal in the first item on the list. It's a 1. I, I construct my number by saying any digit besides 1, it has to be the first digit of this number. I take the second digit of the second number, and I make my second digit of this number any digit except the second digit. So any digit except 3, say it's 4. I take the third number on this list. I look at the third place value. It's an 8. I do any number besides 8, say it's 7. 
and I continue in this way. I've only done four as an illustrative example, but you could do any number of um, any any size of real number, and meaning any length of, of this this infinite string. Um, so this number that I've created, no matter what the list is, no matter what order I put it in, no matter um, if it's random, random numbers, if, if we have a list of all real numbers, then I can still construct a number that's not on this list by taking, in, by constructing a number that's different in its first digit from the first number, different in its second digit from the second number, different in its third digit from the third number, etc. You can see why this is called the diagonal argument. Now this number is different in at least one digit from every number on my supposedly complete list, which means for any list that's simply in correspondence with the natural numbers, I can find a real number that's not on this list. That means the size of the real numbers, the, size, the cardinality of the real numbers, is greater than a countable set. It's greater than the size of the integers um, or the natural numbers, because there's no way I can create a bijection between, um, or a list, numbered list, of all real numbers. So this is one example of um, the fact that the size of the power set is always, the cardinality rather of the power set is always greater than that of the set. You can look up a, a more general proof. It's going to require a little more abstraction and symbols, so I wanted to start with this basic version.